one of my favorite places. You know, sometimes it just feels amazing to be alive in a wild place like this. In this series, I'll be exploring six of Australia's unique landscapes. Join me as I travel through spectacular tracts of wilderness from the open grasslands Here away he goes. to the dark part of the rainforest. It makes you feel very small and insignificant when you're standing next to a buttress fruit like this. On the trail of the weird and wonderful animals found here and nowhere else. Oh, that's a great bridge. Wasn't that beautiful? For a naturalist, this is one of the most inspirational places to visit on our entire planet. This is my wild Australia. <laughs> This week's journey takes me to Victoria, a state which is like a hall of fame for Australia's most iconic animals. In this program, I want to explore the Australian bush. It basically refers to any landscape that contains gum trees. That could be open grassland with just a few trees to much denser vegetation like this woodland. What's really interesting though is that it's in the bushlands that I'm likely to find the most classic of Australian wildlife. Victoria is the smallest state on the Australian mainland. It's on the southern coast and has a temperate climate. 60 kilometers southwest of Melbourne is the Yuyangs National Park, where I'll be starting my search for koalas, kangaroos, and a unique and mysterious egg-laying mammal. The Yuyangs are a series of granite ridges formed over 365 million years ago when the granite eroded more slowly than the surrounding volcanic rock. The soil here is newer and more fertile than in other parts of Australia, so most of the original woodlands have been cleared for agriculture, leaving only pockets of native bush in a patchwork of farmlands. It's in the woodlands on the slopes of this mountain that I'm hoping to find one of Australia's most popular animals. The ground here is quite arid and it really favours eucalyptus or gum trees like this one here. And you can see it's a fairly specially adapted plant. It has these leathery leaves that reduce moisture loss. It also has an aromatic oil. Oh, lovely. And gum. And they're there to dissuade animals from browsing on the leaves. But like everything in nature, there's always something that manages to cope with the conditions. I'm meeting Janine Duffy, who's been researching the wildlife in the Yuyangs for over 20 years. Hey Janine, are you watching what I think you're the one of the koala bear? Fantastic. Isn't he gorgeous? Isn't he gorgeous? This is the first time I've seen a koala in the wild. Really? And it's a, it's a, it's a very special moment. I love the way he just leans against the tree. He looks like a, a commuter on a, a late train on a Friday evening from London. It's like, I've got the rest here. This is a pillow. <laughs> Koalas spend at least 18 hours a day resting. Then starting at dusk, they'll spend five or six hours eating eucalyptus leaves. He's just waking up now. He's been unsettled for some time. He's new to this area, so he's probably quite uncertain, not about us, but about the dominant male. Half a kilometre away, and out of our sightline is an older male koala that Janine knows as Clancy. 
and this is his territory. The new koala will be acutely aware of Clancy's presence. They have a complex social structure based on hierarchies. So he is probably quite low on the hierarchy and he keeps his place. He put his chest against the branch there, which might be him marking it. If you can see a dark stripe down the middle of their chest, that's a male scent gland. The smell of the scent gland is quite horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it's this horrible body odour smell. It stinks, it's yuck. <laughs> the new koala is marking this tree as his. These two koalas may seem laid back, but don't be fooled. They're tuned into each other through sound and smell. But fights between koalas are actually rare. Aggressive behaviour it's just too much like hard work. Koalas need to conserve their energy at all costs. The eucalyptus leaves they eat are a poor quality food that's toxic to most other mammals. They've got this ability to cope with the gum leaves. Absolutely terrible food. How they do anything on that diet is ridiculous. That's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Even though koalas have a specially adaptive digestive tract, it still takes 200 hours to digest the leaves. Koalas just can't support a high energy lifestyle. Finally, the young koala feels safe enough to relax and get down to some serious napping. You know, I've sat in one of the trees to watch wildlife, but I have never managed to balance with quite the aplomb that the koala there has. That's a neat act. <laughs> I've rarely seen a koala in such a ridiculous position. <laughs> but there's no rest yet for me, as I leave the wooded mountainside and head down to the open grasslands below the Yuyangs, where I'm hoping to find another famous Australian marsupial. These lower volcanic plains are a great place to look for iconic Australian species, like that beautiful emu. The emu is Australia's largest bird at two metres high. They can't fly, but walk long distances every day, searching for food wonderful to watch but what I've really come out here to see are eastern grey kangaroos and just on the edge of the tree line over there I can see one. In fact more than one but I think I'm going to head in this direction and see if I can get any closer. I'm going to use the bushes for cover. Eastern greys are one of the most common species of kangaroo in Australia. They're highly sociable and live in tight-knit groups called mobs of about 10 animals. The ground is covered in tracks so I know they're nearby. I'm getting fleeting glimpses but they're very wary. Just come across the top over in this direction. Something obviously spoke them as they've come out into the open here and they've taken up an all-round defensive position all up, looking, seeing what's going on. Amazing creatures. The females are so much bigger than the females and they 
they stand with a macho showing their biceps off of course something you always think they should have a can of lager in their hand Most of the females in this group will be related. Joeys stay in their mother's pouch until they're at least seven months old. That last female, she had quite a big Joey in her pouch. You can just see its front legs poking out over the top. Bouncing is a highly efficient form of movement. As Australia is a large and poorly vegetated country, the ability of the kangaroo to travel long distances using minimal energy has been the secret of its success. It doesn't get much more Australian than that, does it? Watching Eastern Grey kangaroos. Just love the way they move. Next, I'm off in search of some of Australia's more unusual animals, rare and strange creatures that I've never seen before. I'm exploring Victoria in southern Australia, and that really is a great place to see all the classic icons of Australian wildlife, the emu, the kangaroo, the koala. But here, where the eucalypt forests give way to grassland, that provides me the opportunity to catch up with something a little different, a marsupial predator. <laughs> This is the Mount Rothwell Conservation Reserve, 450 hectares of preserved native bushland, 45 kilometers west of Melbourne. Amazing old buildings, it looks like a, a film set, doesn't it? And it is a film set. And in the background there, there's a, a shooting range over there. It feels like there's a, a battle raging here and of course this was built to represent one of the most interesting battles in Australian history the battle between the police and their most famous outlaw or as they call them bush rangers and that was Ned Kelly however this whole film set was due for demolition until they discovered a different type of bush ranger living in the pub but this one is a rather more lovable rogue I'm meeting Jackie Young, an environmental conservationist on the reserve. Morning, Jackie. Welcome to the saloon of the Ned Kelly set. Tell me about what you've got hanging out in here. It's no longer bush rangers. We actually have uh, spot-tailed or tiger quolls that have made this their home. We have one that nests under the floor and we have one that lives in the walls. So, yeah, pretty cool place to hang out if you're a quoll. I'm just about to check the camera traps if you're interested. So, what have you got? This is a spot-tailed or tiger claw. Tiger claw. They're the little cousins of the Tassie Devil, so they're probably the size of a small dog. <laughs> These tiger claws may look cute, but like Ned Kelly, they're killers. They're the largest remaining carnivorous marsupial on the mainland. Their bigger relative, the Tasmanian Devil, is now only found in Tasmania. Now these assassins, and that's literally what they are, are here to do an important job, aren't they? Yes, they were brought here um, as part of our rabbit control program. The rabbits do overgraze on the, a lot of the native grasses. They cause erosion through digging rabbit warrens. And the tiger quolls are certainly helping us out. Well, it would be really good to see some of these animals. Absolutely. Come on through. Okay. <laughs> The aim of the reserve is to eradicate all non-native species, including rabbits, and reintroduce endangered native animals. The 
Kaikol's smaller cousin, the Eastern Quoll, was totally wiped out on mainland Australia. But thanks to a successful breeding program here at Mount Brothwell, they're also being reintroduced to the reserve. So this is Ken. He came to us from Tasmania. He and his sister broke into a supermarket over there and were sent into captivity. It's like the original uh, inhabitants of Australia. The convicts. The convicts. <laughs> he was transported to Australia for, for shoplifting, of all things. Yes. He participates in the breeding program, so he has fathered a litter this year, and we'll hold on to him. There you go, convict Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting Eastern Qual Ken is a great introduction to the family, but I'm keen to see his more fearsome cousin, the tiger quoll. Luckily for me, one has been brought in for a routine medical examination. As quolls are nocturnal, we wait for dusk to set it free. Right then, Jackie, what have we got here? Yeah, so this is Ned. So he's part of our rabbit control program and uh, hopefully we can get him back out there. Okay. Ned is an extremely successful predator. He was two kilos when he was first released on the reserve, but thanks to his rabbit-rich, high-protein diet, he's now weighing in at a chunky five kilos. He's a much more heavily set animal, isn't he? Yes. You can see that. There you go. I'm going to go back out for rabbits. Here away he goes. <laughs> Fantastic. That is great. And so there we are, another assassin back in Ned Kelly's pub waiting to ambush the rabbits that shouldn't be here. I'll leave Ned to hunt down his supper as I take to the road travelling further into the interior of Victoria, away from the arid grasslands, to explore a wet eucalyptus forest. This is the Otway National Park. The gum trees grow here in protected valleys, and with a little bit of moisture, they can realise their full potential. They're staggeringly beautiful. I've come here to see my last iconic Australian animal. It's an unusual one, and this is a good habitat. It's difficult to see, but it's overcast, and that is a really good thing. It's the perfect conditions to go looking. The wet forest has an overstory of tall eucalyptus, like the swamp gum and stringy bark but it also has a dense understory of smaller trees, broadleaf shrubs and ferns. The feel is lush, green and fertile, much more like a rainforest than the dry eucalyptus woodland. But for the shy animal I'm seeking, I need to take to the water. This is Lake Elizabeth. It's a pretty new lake. It was formed 50 years ago when there was a landslide that dammed off the stream. That's why it's got these hulks of trees in the middle. It's very beautiful. And it's the habitat for one of the strangest creatures on Earth. need to be as quiet as possible. The first sign is usually a silver, glinting bow wave on the surface of the water. That's 
fabulous. Eh? The platypus. Yeah, look, 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 look. It's, it's coming towards us. Fantastic. Platypuses. They are elusive creatures living in deep burrows in the banks and are seldom found on land. Beautiful. Weird looking thing. <laughs> Platypuses are absolutely unique. They're warm blooded and furry and feed their young with milk but have a flattened skeleton and lay eggs like a reptile. Just there. And here. There. 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 I'm surrounded by platypuses. <laughs> or platypoos, if you want to be technical. Wonderful. Surrounded by platypuses, that's amazing. I tell you what, the eucalyptus forests of Victoria have been truly rewarding to me on this trip. The things I've seen, but that beats all. Three platypuses around me. Wow, that's so neat. Just going to sit here now while there's still some daylight and drink in the views. That is a rare sight indeed. Next time, I'm in the rainforest, searching for a giant prehistoric bird. Mm -hmm.